Welcome everyone, I hope you're doing really well today. Thanks for joining me in this video in which I've got three different gameplays for you across three different maps, but they're all using the R3KT. This is an epic variant of the R3K assault rifle. So to start off the video, I want to talk a little bit about this gun. I actually got it out of a common supply drop. Then I'm going to move swiftly on to give you my five top tips for Infinite Warfare. Now, there's lots of tips I could give for Infinite Warfare, but if I try and narrow it down to five, and I think about the five that's most important to try and help people improve, those are the tips I'm going to give you in this video. So first of all, the R3KT, epic variant, what do I think of this gun? I actually really like it. I quite like the base R3K, just the standard version of the gun and that's a gun that rewards accuracy but I feel it quite punishes you if you miss your first burst and this gun I would say is a little bit more forgiving than the standard R3K and it also feels very powerful and what this gun offers there's two perks you've got the break point perk which fires as fully automatic with reduced recoil so this is a pretty accurate gun then you got stockpile which gives you some increased ammo and i really like the gun it still rewards accuracy but it's just that bit more forgiving than the base version and it does feel pretty powerful to me i quite like the fact that it's an energy rifle so after you shoot someone it's starting to regenerate ammo and it means you're not reloading as much so that's quite an important thing if you don't need to reload too much in Infinite Warfare because it's quite a quick game and it can actually save your life at some times if you're reloading at key points in the game and avoid reloading at the wrong time so overall yeah I think this gun's pretty good it's certainly one that I feel I could bring out and try and go quite hard with get some nice games with the three gameplays you're watching, I think I get 42 kills in two of them and 40 kills in another, they're team deathmatch, so yeah, this gun's pretty good to me. I haven't used it a massive amount, I just found that I got the gun and I could work with it from the get-go, it doesn't really need anything to adjust to as such, you're going to pretty much like this gun if you like burst fire rifles. Now, the attachments I like using on the gun, three and they're all simple, quick draw, grip and stock. Quick draw, don't really need to say why, you want to get your sights up on those enemies as quick as you can. And although this gun is accurate, I like to test things from like a play perspective, I'm not too much into stats and things. So I played a few games without the grip and then I played a few with grip and I found I was far more accurate and did a lot better with grip. I could sense the game was getting more bullets on target for me if I use grip so I definitely recommend that on this gun. And then stock, this gun's all about accuracy so stock can let you fine tune your aim. It can also let you move quicker to try and avoid enemy gunfire or just get the element of surprise in enemies at times. So that's really all I think you need in this gun. Nothing else I put on made me feel I was getting any benefit. I did try suppressor and I actually felt that made the gun weaker. Obviously it is making the gun weaker but I felt it was very noticeable in my gameplay. I just felt that there were certain situations where I, if I hadn't the suppressor on I would have won a gunfight but instead I lost it so I really recommend going with a gun as it is. It's quite a powerful feeling gun so don't do anything to detract from that. So that's my setup and that's what I think of the R3KT, the epic variant. Really nice gun and it's one which I'll probably use quite a lot when I'm playing Infinite Warfare. Now on to my five top tips for Infinite Warfare. These I hope will help you. Some you maybe already do or have heard already, but in my mind these are five good tips and if you're not aware of these or you're not doing these things, I certainly think it could help bring on your game. First of all, what's the most important thing for tip one? You've got to be able to aim the enemies you want to shoot. Now, the key point of doing that is how you've got your sensitivity set up in game. Are you someone that's aiming at an enemy and you often find your aim is suddenly to the left of them, then to the right, and you're maybe drifting too high or too low? 
you probably have got your sensitivity set too high. If you really struggle with your aim, that's the first thing I look at is your sensitivity. Start reducing it a bit. Now, obviously it's a quick game, so if you run a really high sensitivity, the bonus is you can turn quick on people, there's maybe people jumping through the air and they're moving quick so you can try and get your aim onto them or into the rough area quicker but the downside is it's very hard to be accurate with a high sensitivity in this game if you can control the sensitivity fine bump it up if it suits you but if you really find you're missing shots i would try lowering your sensitivity down i think it helps most once you get past like close range High sensitivity is okay up close, but generally if you're using like assault rifles, that type of player, I really recommend a lower sensitivity helps at mid to long range. Now typically on console, if you play or start round about 4, I think default sensitivity is 3, if you bump it up to 4, that's what I play on if I'm using a stock controller and that works very well for me, I find I'm able to be accurate with that. Sure, I've definitely encountered times that I've felt if my sensitivity was higher I could have got my aim onto someone quicker, but overall if we look at the grand picture and you sort of base your performance over 100 games, I'm sure you'll do better with a slight lower sensitivity so play around with it but if you're missing some shots definitely look at lowering your sensitivity next tip in this video I want to give you again related to aim and that is strafing how many of you actually use your left thumbstick moving left and right when you're in a gunfight to fine-tune your aim for example if I'm aiming at an enemy and I'm slightly to the left of him with my aim for some reason I tend to adjust my aim on a target using the left thumbstick. I think a lot of people use the right aim thumbstick and it tends to move a bit quicker on screen. So it's harder to make fine tune left right horizontal adjustments to your aim with the right thumbstick. I really recommend getting used to strafing. And if this is something that suits you or maybe to help you get the feel of what I mean, Try putting stock on your gun and adjusting your aim with strafing. See how it helps you. It could really help you get your aim on a target and also make you a bit more mobile and hopefully avoid some enemy bullets. Now, my third tip. Play to the strengths of your gun. What I mean by this is if you're using, for example, a assault rifle, Unless it's a special variant, and I think there's one for like the MV4 where it gives you better performance up close, I think, from hip fire. Um, unless you're using a special variant or a gun that is known for being good at close range, I think the K bar is quite good up close. But unless you're using something special like that, you really don't want to be like two feet from an enemy using an assault rifle. You're more wanting to position yourself at like mid to longer range, especially if it's something like the normal MV4. Once you get up close to enemies, you're going to get beat out with quicker firing guns, shotguns and SMGs and so on. So how can you build this into your game? First of all, if you've got a favourite gun, learn its strengths and weaknesses. So for me, I quite like the MV4, so I know the ranges it works best. So I navigate the map in a way that, as much as I can control it, I'm going to encounter enemies at the ranges where that gun performs to its strongest feature. And that is the accuracy at mid to long range. Now, if I'm using a shotgun, I would try to move around the map in a way that I'm not going to expose myself to enemies at long range. So basically they're at a range they could kill me with like an SMG or an assault rifle, but I'm at a range where my shotgun is absolutely useless and I have no chance of killing them. So be aware of how variants affect the guns. Certain variants can affect like a, an assault rifle you traditionally think mid to long range. As I've talked about, some variants may affect that a little bit. But get your favourite gun, learn where it performs best, do you kill people best at mid-range, is it close, is it far, and then try and think about the maps and how you can position yourself in the best place to make the gun most effective. Next thing I want to talk about, tip number four, is map knowledge. This is a huge part of playing Infinite Warfare. Movement is so quick. 
and as you can see in the maps there's like windows people can jump through and so on so when you're playing you really need to think about where enemies could be coming from um, you need to know your escape routes like if you get in trouble in a gunfight how can you quickly get out of the situation to recover your health and so on where can you do wall runs and where could enemies flank you from so wherever you are on a map you need to know where enemies could start firing at you from or where you could see enemies to get some kills from so really learn the maps it's it's very important no matter how good you are at aiming and so on if you've got a lack of map knowledge and you you generally putting yourself in the wrong spots and maps you're probably going to end up killed far too often now my final tip for this video tip number five and it's very important um, and that is use the mini map now the mini map can be countered with a uav or a counter uav sorry and Unless you're running a perk to counter the counter UAV, you're not able to use the minimap. But assuming you can see it, it is absolutely fantastic for showing you where enemy positions are. And again, they could be running ghosts, so keep that in mind and they're maybe not showing up. But it is so important, it shows you with great effect where the enemy is. It shows you where your teammates are. And you can sort of get a feel once you're used to it of areas that enemies could potentially be in or areas of the map are, that are most likely safe. So if you get in a heated situation you're able to get out of it and get into that safe area of the map or find where your teammates are and get back into them because there's always a bit more safety in numbers. So really focus on that mini map when you're playing, learn how to use it, learn how to use it to your advantage, but also be aware of things like ghosts, counter UAVs and so on that can affect what you're actually seeing on the mini map or if you can actually see it at all. So those are my top five tips for Infinite Warfare. Those are the things that strike me as being most important. They're the key sort of things I incorporate into my own gameplay and I think would help most people. I hope they help you, I hope you find them useful and I'm going to leave you to watch the end of the gameplay. I hope you've enjoyed these three gameplays. Pretty high kills in all of them and I know some people just like watching gameplay in general so I wanted to really focus on the R3KT epic variant and I hope you've enjoyed seeing that and I hope you've enjoyed hearing what I think are my top five tips. So thanks so much for watching, I really appreciate all your support and I'll see you soon for another video.